Blocks are great. They're one of the most useful tools in AutoCAD. Dynamic blocks can be even more useful as they can be changed on the fly to better fit your needs. Let's make a dynamic block. I work in the civil engineering field and need to place a north arrow on my drawings in plan view. I do this all the time. Typically, north is shown to be facing the top of the drawing or to its left. But sometimes though north is rotated so that the drawing fits the paper better. In a plan and profile sheet, this is often the case. So let's make a north arrow block that can be rotated just on a whim. And let's add in it different styles of arrows just for variety's sake. So I've added a file for this, and it's called Chapter Project. It starts off some of the work for us so that we don't have to do it. There are already a few north arrows in it. We'll use them to help start with. I've also included a completed version of the file here for you, just in case you have issues with it and you want to look at the final product ahead of time. Just think of it as time travel, seeing what will be done before you do it. Let's open up the North Arrow file, which is our Chapter Projects Dynamic Blocks file. We have three different arrows here. They're all very typical, and you can use either one. A lot of times you're going to find project managers or engineers or architects, whoever, and they like things a certain or specific way. Usually it's their way. So we're going to make a north arrow here that we can easily edit and so that we also have some varieties in it. So we're going to use essentially two different commands here or parameters and actions. One's going to be a visibility setting and we'll have three of them, one for each arrow. And then in each of those, we're going to use the rotate parameter and action so that we can spin the arrow around based on the center of each of these circles. Really, it's not too complex, but this will show you how to use multiple different types of parameters and actions inside one block to give you a lot of different options. So first, we need to create a new block. We have three different north arrows here. They're almost identical, except for the arrow heads and the tails. What we're going to do to make things easier for us is that we're going to move them on top of each other. Now, each of these are already their own block, so that's going to make it easier for us. And yes, you can put blocks inside a block. They're called nested blocks. Just be careful that everything's set to the appropriate layers and style settings. So let's move them all on top of each other. This one is called the North Arrow Double Closed Open. This one is called the Double Open. This one is called a single open. So we're just going to move these. Doesn't matter which ones you move which. Just grab them all from the center of this circle and stack them up on top of the center of each circle. And now they look like they're just one arrow. So now we're going to start our block command. We're going to pick an insertion point. That insertion point is going to be the center of our circle here. We're going to select our objects. Just the crossing window will be fine. See, it found all three of our blocks. Press Enter. And now we're going to give this a name. Let's just call it North Arrow. We'll call it North Arrow Dynamic. Everything's in inches, and we're good. Now, this is just one block. So let's select it, right click, and go to the block editor. Or you can come up to your ribbon panel if you'd like. So we need to create three different visibility states, one for each arrowhead. But before we do that, I want to add something else to this. I want to add a bit of text to it. We're going to add an attributed block, and we're going to default the value to n for north. This way we can change it in the drawing if we want to. So we're going to add some more features to this. So we're going to go to an attribute definition, pick it, and for the tag prompt and the default, let's just all go with a capital N in each case. This way, if you wanted to, you could make it say east or west or south or northeast, etc. Now we're going to put it in the center of our arrow, so let's give it a middle center justification. And for our text style, I've already set one up in the file for us called North Arrow. We're going to use that, and the text height is going to be at 0.12. Click OK, and then let's insert it here, right in the center of this circle. So now, as we spin this around, the letter N, we want to stay where it is. 
Let's make sure it's by layer, layer zero. Okay, now we're going to create some visibility states. So let's set up a visibility state now, one for each arrow. Make sure that the text is visible in all views. So let's go to our parameters and click visibility. Now we need a spot for this, and we can put this selection anywhere on our visibility state. So let's just put it right there. You can always move this around. So let's create some visibility states. Click the button here. Let's rename this current one. And remember, we had three different arrows. We had a double open, we had a double that was open and closed, and then we had a single that was open. So we'll just call it double open, press enter, select new. Now we can do a couple of different things when we create a new visibility state. We can hide everything, we can show everything, or we can leave the existing visibility states unchanged. It's kind of hard to do when you're only creating your second one. So it may be easier just to keep everything the way it is right now. So we have a double open, then we have a double open closed, and then we have another one of single open. Our current visibility state is double open. Now we need to turn some things off. Now this letter N, if we select and right click it, and we go to our visibility state, the object visibility, we can say show for current state, hide for current state, or hide for all, or show for all. We want it to show for all, so we're making sure that it's doing that. So now let's pick a block. What we want is just the single open, so we wanna get rid of all the other blocks. So let's pick one. This is the double open, so we don't want that one. Right click it, go to the object visibility, say hide for current state. That's our single, so we don't want to turn that one off. Let's pick the double. Right click again, object visibility, hide for current state. And there we go. So this is what we want it to look like. That's the single open. Now this can be a bit tedious and a bit repetitive, but this is how you set it up. Once you set it up, then it's done. Let's go to our double open, set it current, click OK. Now we want to keep the double open available. So we'll go through these, and we have the double open. We don't want that one. Sometimes you may have to go with a draw order type of an issue and put things to the back until you can pick what you want. Now we have the double closed. OK, that's good. Right click and object visibility, hide for the current. That's not the one we want. There we go, that's the one we wanna turn off. Object visibility, hide for current state. So now we have just this one showing. I'm gonna select it, there's only one object selected, so that's good. Go to visibility state again, and we want the double open and closed. Set this one as current, click okay. And now we just do the same thing. This is the double closed open. That's not the one we want. So I'm going to move that with the draw order to the back. That's our double open. So we'll right click, object visibility, hide, and then come over here again. There's our single. Right click, object visibility, hide. Okay. Now let's test this before we go any further to make sure that our visibilities are changing appropriately. Go to the test block. Here's our north arrow, select it. Here's our visibilities. Okay, we have double open, that's what we see. Double open closed, and now single open. Fantastic, we did a good job. So let's close this. And now in each visibility state, we need to add our rotation to it. So let's just start at the top of the list at DO. Click OK. And now we add our parameter, rotation. Now, where do we want to rotate this at? I want to rotate it right at the center of this circle. So I'm going to snap to the center point of the circle, and the radius I'm going to put right at the end of the arrow. And I'm going to type in 360 degrees, because I want it to be able to spin all the way around. Now, our grip point, I don't want it to be over here. I want it to be on our end point of our north arrow. So I'm just going to pick it, and then drag it, and snap right to the end point there. And now we need to add our action. That's the rotate action. Select the parameter, which is right here. Now select the objects. Now be careful. Make sure you pick everything 
except for that letter N. Because if we rotate it 90 degrees, it'll look like the letter Z, and we don't want that. Once we've picked everything, press Enter, and there we go. Now, to make sure we've done this correctly, why don't we go ahead and test the block? This was our double open. We select it. We have the different states we tested already. And now we have our rotation. We pick that grip, and it seems to be working wonderfully. And our letter N is right there. And we never tested the letter N. It is an attribute, by the way. So let's double click it, and here it is. Seems to be working fine. There's probably not a reason to change that from the letter N, but the option is there in case we ever want it. All right, so let's close this. And we'll finish up our rotation parameters and actions and our other visibility states. This time let's use a parameter set. We want the rotation set. So we need our rotation point. That will be the center of this circle. Now we need the radius, which comes to the end point here. We want it to rotate 360 degrees. Let's move our angle action point up to our end point of our arrow. And now we need to add our objects. So we pick our action right here, right click, and action selection set. Make a new selection set. Remember to pick everything, even the parameter. If you don't pick the parameter, it won't know what to associate it to. Don't pick the letter in. Press enter, and there we go. So you can see using the parameter set was nice in that it paired the correct parameter with the correct action. And in this case, it's a rotation. It's not difficult to figure out, but it does save you a couple of steps in having to go back and forth from parameters to actions. Okay, we have one more visibility state. Single open. Set that current. Click OK. And let's do the same thing again. Rotation set. We're going to snap to the center point of the circle. And now we need our radius. And the radius really just defines where that grip is going to be at. The important information is the angle. So we'll type that in 360. We're going to move this angle grip point from here. So you just pick it, and then you snap up to our end point there. Okay, something's not right here. This angle is at a weird angle. So you can select it, and you can see here in your properties palette, it has the angle right here. You can make changes to that all you want. And there it is. So if that happened to you, you know how to fix it now, and that's very valuable. Remember, the parameters and actions are objects too. And so if they're an object, you can probably make some changes to them in the properties palette. So let's go here again, and we need to add our objects to our action set. So right click on it, action selection set, make a new one. Remember again to pick everything except for the letter N. Press enter. Now let's test this thing out completely. You can rotate this view. That's great. Now I can go to my DOC. Okay, that works. I can rotate this one all the way around. That's good. And I go to my single open and excellent. And I can rotate this all the way around. It works. That's fantastic. So let's close this. That's our block test window. And now that we're done, we can close our block editor. Save changes, yes. And here's our new block. And now we're using it for real in AutoCAD. That's fantastic. So congratulations, you're done. You've seen how to make a dynamic block. You've worked with or created yourself several different parameters and actions with visibility states, rotations, annotated objects, etc. There are a lot of things that you can do with dynamic blocks. Some are more simple, some are much more complicated. How you get there is up to you. It depends on what you need and what you hope to accomplish with your dynamic block.